What a wild and wacky week of football it was. You had, on on today's episode, we're talking studs, we're talking duds. And that's pretty much all there was this week. There was no normalcy. You had outlandishly great performances, and then you had the worst things ever. And, and in the middle, I guess, is Jalen Hurts, where he sucks and is great for fantasy. We're going to talk through them all, tell you who you might want to drop, who you want to keep. Like the video, subscribe, share, tell your friends, and enjoy the show. Are you hungering for something new this fall? HelloFresh has got your back with pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions. Your new favorite meal can be prepared in under 30 minutes. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping when you use the code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday, October 25th, the Fantasy Footballers. Jason Moore is here. Oh, yes, I am. Jay Grizz is present. I am so sorry, Jay Grizz. I'm Andy Holloway. Welcome into a Monday episode of the show. Mike Wright is on by this week along with everybody else. Yeah, it was a good week to take off. He's not gone this week. He'll be back tomorrow, right? That's the, that's the word on the street. Yeah. Coming back tomorrow. So He's pro- He's probable. He's, they don't have that anymore. He's still questionable. Oh, okay. You have to be questionable. They got, rid of pro- they got rid of probable. A lot happened this weekend. Uh, Judge Giamatti Al Borland in the building as well. hey What's up, Foot Clan? And um, lots to talk about. I a, mean, there. It was a crazy week. The wheels have fallen off for a, several teams and players. And we're in, you know, some people said it was like Brandon Ayuk's funeral last night. Yeah, that was – I think there are a handful of players um, who are going to get it today. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to get it. No question, and a lot of drop questions. We'll have waivers on tomorrow's show. We'll go through studs and duds today. But we always begin in the most sophisticated of fashions mm, yes. as we react to the weekend. Oh, how delightful. Was that – Mike Ev- Evans? <laughs> <laughs> good start. Good start. We have fields of screams. Mm, Sam Darnit. <laughs> Same Darnold. Same old Darnold. Yamian Harris. Oh, he was great. Uh, yay, Jay Brown as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, Patrick, Patrick Mahomeless. <laughs> yes. And uh, my go ahead. personal favorite, Patrick Mapartments. Oh, my goodness. So bad. Yak. Ertz, longest oh. touchdown of his career. 47 yarder. Chuba Scrubbard. Chuba Hubarf. Oh, CJ Uz. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I like that. Uh, where's Waller? Oh, uh, and of course, Super Jamario. And we'll uh, do a reprise here. Jamarvelous Chase. Yes, he is. Yes, he <laughs> Jamarvelous forever. Jamarvelous Chase. Ha- Jamar Chase is the single greatest seven-game stretch to begin a career in NFL history. That's right. And I I he, think he beat our boy. Wasn't it? Didn't that belong to uh, Anquan Bolden? It did. Oh, yeah, I believe Anquan Bolden's first game in the NFL was like 202. Yeah, it was unbelievable. But Jamar Chase is really unstoppable right now, so he'll be part of the He'll be part of the studs. I think. I think he will. Um, yeah. He. He. And he looks so effortless. And those are those players. Like when you watch him, it just never looks like he's giving it his all because he doesn't need to. But he is it's chill. Just, chill dominance. Yes. Yeah. He. He's. He's outstanding. Uh, Thefantasyfootballers.com. dot com. Head over there. Rankings. Tools. Everything you need. And you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Let's talk news, and then we'll get into those stats. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. 
I mean, this isn't, I mean, it might be news to the listeners, but I mean, I won again in League of Record. And I'm, I've become convinced that it, it's more important to Al Borland that I lose than he, than he wins. Hmm. Like he is, you, you were on tilt this weekend. I was. You are the one team that I'm afraid of. Yeah. And you, so you just don't want me to get any W's. Just, you want me out of the playoffs. Accurate. Okay. Well, if it makes you feel any better, uh, unless Alex Collins gets 30 tonight, I will lose yet again with my hodgepodge of backup uh, running backs for my injured starters. It was a, it was a weird week. Yeah. I mean, there were a lot of start set decisions, had Sunday Live, and there were plenty of questions I didn't want to try to answer. I mean, just t disgusting options out there. When Dante Pettis is part of a conversation for a week, that tells you everything you need to know about your options. Yeah, but a win is a win. I mean, you called the Dante Pettis as a decent start, and it it felt like <laughs> it's redemption. It felt bad to do it, but I can't wait to see oh my Brandon Ayuk's second team and how oh gosh. good he will be for them someday. Oh, see, we could talk about that. Yeah, we could talk about trading up for Brandon Ayuk and trading up for Dante Pettis and trading up for Trey Sermon. Yeah, and yeah. We could talk about. We that. could talk about that, but I do not but want. We're not in the Kyle Dug Shanahan to, uh, to get that publicity. So Darren Waller missed the game, ankle injury late in the week, wasn't feeling good. Raiders on by, clearly didn't need him. And it was uh, an afternoon game, which made it. If, if you weren't prepared, th that was one of the more difficult ones because we hadn't seen a ton of news about that early on in the week. Kind of happened, felt more out of the blue. Yeah, and you would have had to just throw Foster Moreau in there or pivot to a matchup tonight, Gerald yeah. Everett. I mean, if you threw Foster Moreau in there, you were fine. Yeah. Miles Sanders was ruled out, ankle injury in the first half. Matthew Betts weighing in, our injury expert. Uh, similar to the mechanism of Saquon Barkley's ankle injury a few weeks ago. Unlikely to be a lengthy recovery, but could certainly miss week eight against Detroit, which is a juicy running back matchup, which means that Bart Scott, Kenneth Gainwell, there'll be some combination of those players. Bart Scott? What did I? The, I'm pretty sure you threw out a Bart Scott who was in was his a own great right. Linebacker. I, he, was a, he was a great football player. He may factor but, in this uh, week. <laughs> but Boston Scott, I think, would be um, the one playing against <laughs> oh, the Lions. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, fair point. <clears throat> I got part of it right. Josh Jacobs exited with a chest injury. Um, yeah, Josh Jacobs was on his way to having a great game, already had a touchdown. So the nice thing is, if you did play him, you didn't have a bad week, but unfortunately it could have been much better. In fact, you saw that with Kenyon Drake having um, a, a pretty good game in his stead. Yeah, and Kenyon Drake, you, you might have reacted and said, oh, it's a great waiver pickup, but they're on by and they're not expecting Jacobs to miss time. So if you if you pay up for him, you don't get to play him. Oh, I'm not paying up for yeah. Kenyon Drake. I, I would expect that Kenyon Drake goes into the Kenyon Drake role two weeks from now, which is a borderline rostered role. You're talking about behind Jacobs? Behind Jacobs, yeah. Um, he's been, yeah, he's been relevant for a couple weeks. Zach Wilson suffered a knee injury in the second quarter. He's going to miss two to four weeks. Yeah, the backup uh, came in and threw an immediate <laughs> touchdown. Is that you forgetting his first name? His first yeah, it's white is his last name. Yeah, and let's just leave it there. There you go. Johnny Smith exited with a shoulder injury. AC joint sprain is what Matthew Betts believes. Could miss a couple weeks. You had Hunter Henry score for the fourth consecutive week. Yeah, I mean, if he's... Almost twice. If he... Uh, obviously, he's been utilized and he's been scoring and he's uh, obviously, obviously had a great career for fantasy. If he's alone, I, I think he's probably one of the best pickups. Malcolm Brown, quad injury. Availability for week eight in doubt. This would mean you'd have added confidence in Miles Gaskin. Who got into pay dirt again this week because people benched him. Washington football team, Diami Brown, knee injury. Uh, Tyrod Taylor will be practicing. Still unsure if he's back. It, it will be another chance to, you know, you could look at Brandon Cook's. Tyrod represent you know they were playing a lot better with him at quarterback. Yeah, I don't know about a lot better. They, they were, were play, playing. They won better. a game with him at quarterback. That's true, but I think that some of that is the Jacksonville Jaguars' fault. Mm, I wonder point. if Davis Mills because Davis Mills almost beat the Patriots. Yeah. So what's what's more impressive, barely losing to the Patriots or beating the Jaguars? 
probably barely losing to the <laughs> Patriots. Uh, what did what was Cooks' line this week? He was, ugh, yeah, I don't think gross. it was five for twenty one. Five for twenty one. That seems hard to do if you're Brandon Cooks. Yeah, I mean, catching five passes. Did he like lose twenty yards on a pass? Nico Collins led the team in receiving with two for twenty eight. Okay, come on, Tyrod. So yeah, maybe we want him back. That was today's news and notes brought to you by our friends at Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Grab the app, get the breaking alerts channel. Let's talk studs. This week's fantasy stud muffins. So you're talking about Mike White, who outscored Patrick Mahomes. Yes, yes, I am talking about Mike White. Uh, clearly the better option this week than Patrick Mahomes. But we can't talk about Pat yet because it's, it's we're talking studs. studs. Yeah. Uh, Matthew Stafford, 28 for 41, 334 and three. Jason, start of the week. Houston next week. Stafford is a locked and loaded starter in fantasy football. Yeah, and and, and as is his uh, best friend, Koopa Koopa touchdowns again. Four Goodness. times this year. Four times he has had two touchdowns. And what what is the, uh, was it receptions? There's a combo stat there. But yes, four times he's had double touchdowns. He's at nine so far on the season. I watched every one of his touchdowns on the coach's uh, film this morning. And I mean, this is not... People have known Devontae Adams is good for a long time. Is that fair? Very fair, yes. And have they been able to stop him ever? No. No, even when there's no other pass catching options. No, on the you team? know it's going to be him. Yeah. I mean, so has... my point is, Cooper Cups. This is not going away. He he is very good at beating a defense, and I think it's the combination of the the kind of you 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 see it with certain quarterbacks and wide receivers they've got a really good mind sink you know you're just you know what they're going to do uh and so that's really helpful combined with Sean McVay you know it's when you watch it's it's not like Jamar Chase who's so much bigger stronger faster that he guys can't tackle him breaks away and you can't catch up to him it's just he's always open and it's it always seems like a blown coverage, but when it happens this many times, it's designed. It's like they are figuring out how to confuse the defense and make them blow the coverage. We were talking, you and I, when we watched the games this weekend about you know the physical tools of Mark Andrews compared to Travis Kelsey and that there's not really a difference, right? But one of the things that makes Kelsey elite is read his own defense. He turns this way instead of that way. It's not quantifiable in the statistics. He's not quantifiable in the analytics. It's just something a player does that makes them better than everybody else. Football IQ. Cooper Cup has always been able to do that, but now you have a quarterback that combines with that skill, and so he finds Cooper Cup when he finds the open zone coverage 80% of the time, where maybe Jared Goff was finding him 40% of the time before. And so it's not going anywhere. I don't even think the touchdowns are going anywhere. I would, oh, oh, oh. I would expect two more, at least two more games where he doubles up. And, oh yes. And uh, I know you, you care because you may or may not have a prop bet on him leading the league in touchdowns. I may or may not have that happen, but uh, let's just say everyone root for Cooper Cup to get touchdowns. Yeah. What do I get a cut if I root for him? Uh, yes, you do. Okay. Joe Burrow, four hundred and sixteen yards, three touchdowns. Joe Burrow put it on display this week against Baltimore, a Baltimore defense in Baltimore that had shut down Justin Herbert the week prior, the five and one team. I mean, this was nothing but impressive. He is doing what, even though Jamar Chase is the headline maker, mm -hmm. if you watch the game, Joe Burrow is, it's a, it's a first down on a third and long to T Higgins. It's a CJ Uzama in a mismatch. It's a, He's doing what Kyler's doing in Arizona, and I, ironically, these are the top two seeds in both leagues. That is mind-blowing. The Cincinnati Bengals are the number one seed. If the playoffs started today, they would have the bye, and they are the number one seed in the AFC. And they play the Jets this week. I'm going to say they win. I'm going to go then, on, out on a limb. And then you're at home against Cleveland, a beat-up Cleveland right now. Who knows where they're going to be? So this is a team that if they win these next two games, you could have them you know, take kind of a definitive lead in that division. Uh, Tua, that's two games in a row for <laughs> where he's been relevant, where he's been very Four good. touchdown passes for Tua Tungavailoa, perhaps 
Not a fan of the trade rumors. No, or or maybe he's really trying because part of the trade rumors are him going somewhere. Maybe the yeah, I was thinking about that with like if the Dolphins where, have where come they back, said Washington doesn't want him or right. Or, if if the Dolphins have come back and won this game, which they, they Tua came back, took the lead to win the game, and then the Falcons were able to go down and kick the field goal to to recapture the lead and win the game. But if the Dolphins came back from that massive uh, deficit and won and won on the back of Tua, then it would be very difficult to be like, and see you later. They're probably going to do that anyway. They're, they're probably Someone gonna, is. Um, was he the quarterback one this week, Brooks? Is that uh, right? Uh, maybe in some format. I see QB, QB 10, QB 1. I mean, 291 and 4. Still had a couple of dumb throws in that game, a couple picks. Um, it's interesting. Has Buffalo next week. Probably don't want to chase these two games against no, Buffalo and Buffalo. No, I, I, I wouldn't. Um, I, I somehow think, faced Tua in every league. Uh, you did. You faced him I don't in a know, lot of leagues. And it was like, cool, I'm Usually facing Usually that's Tua. good. Yeah. But this was this was bad. I Yeah, I would not play him against Buffalo. And I, I think even Joe Burrow, who I love, I said to trade for him a couple weeks ago that he's really going to come on strong the second half of the year. I feel like he's a trap game against the Jets. Interesting. Just because no one ever throws for a lot on the Jets because you are unneeded. Okay. All right. Uh, Tom Brady, he's the quarterback one on the season. Is that a good result for your draft capital? Yeah, and he, he's the quarterback one on the week. I mean, he's he did not finish there, and I know if you watched having Tom Brady, you are you were sad because all of this came in the first half. He dominated the Bears. Sorry, Jay Grizz, close your ears. He dominated. Okay. I didn't say open your mouth. Um, he dominated so – he just – Thoroughly. He embarrassed the Bears. Uh, four touchdown passes, three to Mike Evans, and then he didn't play – he played a little bit in the third quarter. I don't think he played a snap in the fourth. He just was – it was like, okay, we won this game. Let's fly home and let the backups play. No Gronk. No Antonio Brown. Didn't matter. No problem. No problem. Uh, New Orleans next week for him. Jalen Hurts. Ew. This is the opposite of Brady. <laughs> Every week. Jalen he sucks all game long. And then in the fourth quarter, gets enough fantasy points trying to come back. He is so good for fantasy. That's, uh, that's it, though. That's it. What was his um, – I saw a stat this morning. I think uh, the biggest loser shared it with us. But fantasy points by quarter average, 4.8 in the first, 3.7 in the second, 5.5 in the third, 10.8 in the fourth. Yeah. It's a garbage time uh, meal <laughs> for Jalen Hurts oh, every game. Do me a favor and handicap the possible destinations for Deshaun Watson because yes, the, the, Deshaun Watson is my only fear for Jalen Hurts this season for fantasy football. You want me to handicap it? Yeah, where locations, destinations, percentages. Fifty percent Miami. Okay. So I t I still think they're the front runner. I think Carolina is at probably twenty five percent after what's happened with Sam Darnold. That experiment. It's not same Darnold. Same Darnold. And then uh, I would probably put Denver at Philly at twelve and a half each. I know people are eliminating Philly because they, they said he doesn't want to go there. He's got the no trade clause. He chooses his destination. But I am not they're probably at the bottom of those four. They so, just have the most capital. Yeah, I mean I I'd argue that Miami's pretty capable. I mean, I think he's gonna go for three firsts. And I think he gets traded this week. I mean I I think I'm I think he gets traded this week and people a lot of people respond and they say, Well, he's just gonna instantly go on the commissioner's exempt list. Nope. Uh, I would say that that is very unlikely. Yeah, it, it, you know, teams have been kicking the doors and trying to figure out what's happening, and, and the latest update we have on that is that um, he is not expected to go on the commissioner's exempt list. He would be allowed to play while all of the civil proceedings play out behind the scenes. It could change in the blink of an eye if something new comes to light, which would not be shocking. Um, but, uh, right now, if he gets traded, he would be playing probably next week. Yeah, it would happen quickly, which is, you know, I tweeted this morning. Do you take that information with whatever confidence level you have and attempt to translate that into, uh, a, a, a Will Fuller or, a Jalen Waddle or no, I, I, I still don't because of what you just said, there's four 
possible destinations. So if I go and invest in a Will Fuller or a Jalen Waddle, and then he ends up in Denver, then I've invested for nothing. What I'm doing is just grabbing Deshaun Watson for nothing off of waivers and throwing him on my IR when he's ruled out for each week. Yeah, I'm, you know, I could definitely be wrong. Like, we could we could misread the situation. He could end up being a PR nightmare in some way, and the league has to address it because of public pressure. I mean, those things happen, and I don't know what's going to happen, but that's where I'm leaning right now. Are you wondering about the, like, Jalen Hurts freak out situation where you think you have, because he's the quarterback two on the year, which is, it's crazy. For fantasy, he's the quarterback two, and he might lose his job. Oh, because he's bad, just at football. Um, he is not yet finished outside of the top 10 on a week. He has always, every single week he's been a top 10 quarterback, many times being a top six quarterback. So for fantasy, close your eyes, do not watch the game, and enjoy the results of Jalen Hurts. I will add that Carson Wentz had a nice week. It wasn't, you know, it was rainy. But he has, they're the opposite of the Panthers. They lost the game that they should have won against Baltimore, and then they've won their other three. Uh, he's been playing very well. Yeah. And Michael Pittman is is legit. He's been a quarterback one, two of the last three weeks, and one of those is in a torrential downpour. Tennessee next week, so that's I don't know who is Tennessee because they've been a terrible defense that you want to throw against until all of a sudden you know they stop the best quarterback in football. Handily, I don't, I don't know how to analyze that game. It's the lack of Sammy Watkins that's just destroying this offense. Yeah, apparently. All right, before we move on to the running back studs, we want to thank today's sponsors for supporting the podcast, and that includes our friends at Babbel. Learning a, uh, a new language, or even speaking the one I already know, apparently, uh, can be intimidating. Uh, when we first decided to give Babbel a try, you know, you, you worry about level of difficulty, time commitments, um, how your accent sounded out loud, but thanks to Babbel, who they're the number one selling language learning app. The process is addictively fun, fast, and easy. That is what you want when you endeavor to learn a new language. Uh, maybe you're making trips. Uh, maybe you're engaging in a new hobby. They give you bite-sized language lessons for real-world use. Uh, we've all tried Babbel. We live in the Southwest. Um, we've learned. Uh, we've improved on what we know of Spanish through their through their app. Right now, when you purchase a three-month Babbel subscription, you'll get an additional three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. Just go to Babbel.com and use the promo code FOOTBALLERS. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com, code FOOTBALLERS. Babbel, language for life. And we want to thank Omaha Steaks for being so darn delicious. I absolutely love Omaha Steaks. My freezer is always stocked at all times with Omaha Steaks. When I have... Uh, friends in from out of town, or even just friends, you know, over for friends a, from in town, friends from in town, friends, friends from, from neighborhood or uh, high school, Basically, strangers, it's strangers. Whenever I want to eat, um, I'm going to my freezer. I'm getting me some delicious, unbelievable uh, meat to cook on that grill. Whether it's my bacon wrap fillets, which is my go-to, or burgers, which is probably the the most regular meal, or the creme de la creme the caramel apple tartlets they're uh, great um you can go to omahasteaks.com and enter the code footballers into the search bar and order the deluxe grill out assortment it includes over 30 entrees you could share with your family like the bacon wrap filet mignons the filet mignon burgers the boneless pork chops gourmet franks sides desserts and more plus you're going to save over 50 percent on your order and you're going to get 12 free burgers uh, these are basically steaks between buns. So visit omahasteaks.com, keyword footballers. Save over 50% when you order the deluxe grill-out assortment plus 12 free Omaha Steaks burgers and keep making memories with the ones you love. That's omahasteaks.com, keyword footballers. All right, we'll get into the running back studs. Some quick news for you. Nick Chubb back at practice today, so that's a good sign for him maybe making his return. Makes sense. He didn't go on the IR, so this would be the week you would expect him back. Yeah, Dearness Johnson was one of the biggest running back studs of the week. He sure was. He was absolutely awesome. 22 for 146 and one, adding another 22 yards through the air. I think he will be relevant even when Chubb comes back. Because of the Kareem Hunt injury? Yeah, 
and and because of the Chubb injury. They are not going to have this guy come back from a two week absence with a soft tissue issue and be like, here's the ball 30 times. This is a team that's going to run the ball 30 times. Right. But it's not all going to Chubb. And Dearness proved like he can get the job done. All right. Well, they have uh, Pittsburgh coming up this week. If you had a D in your name, you were in good shape. I mean, DeAndre Swift, he's the running back three on the year, 10 targets, eight for 96 and one. Damian Harris, 14 for 106 and two, two targets. Jason started the week, and now the RB14 on the year. I mean, we didn't even talk. I, I talked about it on Sunday Live, but the shocker of the morning was Ramondre Stevenson's uh, removal from the active lineup. It, it, that was mind-blowing. Nobody knew about it. There was no reports in, on the week of anything like this that I personally have come across. It was certainly a blindside, but the process, you know, I – D Damian Harris was my start of the week, and I said I'll, I'll throw Ramondre Stevenson on there too because he is going to dominate, and and he was not active. But how did the other two running backs do? Yeah, I mean, Brandon, uh, what uh, JJ Taylor got in the end zone. Brandon Bolden was great, yeah, and all three were top fifteen running backs this week. I told you, I thought maybe maybe the situation wasn't what we thought in in hindsight. Obviously, it wasn't. Where there was a thigh injury for Brandon Bolden the week before. Perhaps that led to the activity that Ramondre had, but then they just gave it right back to Bolden. And, you know, maybe his involvement in special teams or whatever the case may be. The point is Dam Damian Harris is the guy. Yeah. They have the Chargers coming up in Carolina. The offense runs through Damian Harris, and Mac Jones is playing well. And you can run on the Chargers. So it's another good matchup. I would keep Damian Harris in your lineups. Brooksy, Elijah Missile. Elijah. You fired the missile, and it did not come down on your own head. It was successful. A successful launch. 18 for 107 and 1 on 66% of snaps. You want to talk about more Kyle Shanahanigans. I was so frustrated watching this game. You watch that first drive, and Elijah Mitchell, every time he touched the ball, was 7, 8, 12 yards just every single time. Goes down the field, scores a touchdown. Then the next, like, four or five drives they give him the ball he gets six seven eight yards and then they run another play that doesn't work run another play that doesn't work a punt it's like what are you doing this guy had like almost 100 yards at halftime and finished 18 for 107 uh, and, and a touchdown and he should have he should have been 28 for 175 and two um but as a cardinals fan i'm happy that they did not do that and uh uh, they they dropped the game. Yeah, and but going forward, he's the dude. Yeah, he is at least until Jeff Wilson gets into the mix. But even after that, I think he'll still be involved. Yeah, I mean Jeff Wilson could come in and and kind third of third down. Yeah, exactly. Play that third down role. What's, Maybe goal line too, I'm, though. I mean Elijah was. Oh, I, I don't have the stats in front of me, but if it was that Elijah didn't play a single third down snap, I wouldn't be surprised because every single time that I saw third down, it was Jamichael Hasty out there. Yeah, it was. Uh, what if I told you Jonathan Taylor put up the identical line as Elijah Missile? 18 for 107 and 1. Both players, the same line, in the same game, in the rain. Jonathan Taylor, you don't need us to tell you that he's good, but what you do like is the team improving. And the fact that they're going to be competitive in games lends itself to Jonathan Taylor being active in games. You know, if the, if the Washington football team was competitive in games – Antonio Gibson wouldn't be sitting with a 40% snap share. 100%. I mean, Gibson isn't allowed to play in the fourth quarter because he isn't the passing downs guy, and you are down so big. Do you want to know what else I love about Jonathan Taylor? Tell I love me. the Tennessee Titans, the New York Jets, and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Those are his next three matchups. Oh, baby. Yeah, he's automatic right now. Leonard Fournette managed to give you another good game despite the blowout. 15 for 81 and 1. He has the fifth most running back targets on the year as he's, well. He's a great fantasy option. Like not like I would rather have him than Cordero Patterson, who's been obviously awesome. Would you rather have him than Antonio Gibson? I think I might rather. Yes, I would rather I think, have him than Antonio Gibson. You got a much higher powered offense, more security uh, in, in the game. He's been a top fifteen back the last month, four games in a row, and currently sits as the running back nine on the season. Leonard Fournette. Old Lenny, which is so funny because he's not that old. No. Unless he's just, he seems old. 
but uh, he's been great. 26 years old and crucial to the offense, and you definitely felt like the Ronald Jones snaps yesterday were like, we're up by a lot. Let's get him some work. Let's see if he can not fumble, and good news, he didn't. Yeah, Khalil Herbert. Oh, man, this is some. This is like burying the lead here. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's the one shining star for you, Jay. Um, I'm going to give Mike credit. I mean, Mike called out this name in the offseason, in the scouting season, and then, you know, he doesn't land in a situation that looked very good. Tumbled to the sixth round, and it's, okay, when when you fall to the sixth, you're just irrelevant, and, and that happens. We always like guys that they don't get drafted high, and you just move on, but he got an opportunity and has shown that he's really, really, really good. Five targets, five catches, 18 for 100 against a team you don't run against. Yeah, the, I mean, the, the advice, the process is Damian Williams was back, you're not going to play the question. I don't. I. I don't think we knew whether he, whether Khalil Herbert was the starter or backup in that situation. But he's going to split work against the best run defense in the league. No, thank you. I wouldn't have started Khalil Herbert under any circumstance because you just didn't know if he was even going to get the ball. And when he did against a tough D, he got the ball. He looked good. Twenty three times and was unstoppable. So what happens when David Montgomery comes back? I, you're going to have a player coming off of an injury that historically has ceded some amount of work to either Damian Williams or Ter Tariq Cohen in the past. Who knew that the Chicago Bears would draft a great offensive weapon in the draft this year? Oh no! I mean, we all oh, we all no. we all knew they were going to get some great offensive Look, rookie. The, the Bears fans and it's right, Khalil Herbert. The Bears fans are really edgy right now. I know. I'm sorry. He's just. They're either defeated and sad in a puddle and need our encouragement, or they're defensive and want me to believe that Justin Fields is still the greatest quarterback in the history of the world. Whoa. Okay. That's those look, are the two those are the two Bears fans that I've met. Um or they just want to eat you alive. Right. Jay Gris. They, I've gotten three that. Three Bears too. fans. Um yeah. What I, do you believe? I don't believe Justin Fields is gonna be good. <sighs> I mean, I, I loved him coming out of college. I thought it was legit. And hopefully this is all a Matt Nagy problem because the offense that they run is comically stupid. Can I be can I be a Bears fan? Yeah, for put, a minute. Put and your just, Bears hat on. I, I I don't know. Maybe Yeah, I'll, that's fine. Turn it around. I turn, can't tell. Turn my Cardinals hat around. Um I'll be a Bears fan and respond to you. Okay. So and you tell we'll me. We'll have a we'll have a dialogue. Listen beyond the fact that Matt Nagy is the worst play caller in the world, look, Mitch Trubisky struggled there, Nick Foles struggled there, and Andy Dalton struggled there, so Justin Fields is going to struggle. Maybe it's not the quarterback, Jason. Yeah, no, it, it very well might not be uh, because the throwing it to the flats over and over by design is bad. Um, how many plays have you seen, Bears fan, that you've, whether it was the arms, the legs, the brain, that he that Justin Fields has made some special happen so Does this far? count the preseason? No, 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 because that would be a lot. <laughs> Just in the regular season. I, that, that's the problem that uh, a Bears fan would objectively or should objectively have is that you want to see flashes of, you know, sometimes superior talents. Wait, maybe I got to put my regular hat back on. Yeah, it sounds like it. Um, superior talents generally usurp bad play calling to show you something three or four times in a game. Um, and that's what I would like to see from him. You had, let, let me be clear, Bears fans out there, you have an elite wide receiver in Allen Robinson, an elite up-and-coming receiver in Darnell Mooney, and you had fifth and sixth string DBs mm -hmm. for All Tampa Bay. All of Tampa Bay's DBs were injured. And I'm, I still put a, I lay a lot at the feet of Matt Nagy. He is the worst. But you still want to see flashes from your quarterback. So A drive here or a drive there where correct. it's like you just – Okay, we see it. We see this guy he looks who can afraid. take over a game. Um, he looks outmatched, outclassed right now, and, yeah. and hopefully he is outmatched and outclassed because of no discernible system that can move the ball and be productive, and maybe that change will come after the season and he'll be good. That I am rooting for Justin Fields. No, de no doubt about it. But and I'm not betting on him anymore. Did you see how dejected Allen Robinson was again? Oh, it looked like – it. Th this dude looks like he's – walking on the field. I think he could have stopped one of the ugly interceptions, which yeah. was ugly by Justin Fields, but he was just dead inside. I, I think he's got one goal, and that's make it through this season healthy. And move on. Yeah. I mean, move on. Um, Derrick Henry threw a touchdown pass to make up for not running for one. 
Miles Gaskin had a nice game with the touchdown, 15 for 67. He's tough because they have Buffalo next week, but he, I would play him. <laughs> what, what are you laughing at? I just, it's a, it's a trap. I know. I know. It, it's I, so I would tough play because him because of the Malcolm Brown injury and the fact that, you know, he uh, catches passes. I get it. Two out of three games, he's been awesome. Uh, and But if you start him and he has a bad game, do you realize what he has done to his fantasy managers? That means you started him, got an awful game, benched him for a great game, started him, got an awful game. There will be nicknames for him that aren't that won't be allowed on this on show. show. <laughs> wide receiver studs, Cooper Cup. We talked all about it. He is by far the wide receiver one on the year. Keep being great. Jamarvelous Chase himself, wide receiver two on the year. Keep being great. Mike Evans, the wide receiver seven on the year. Three it, touchdown passes in a half. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, we've talked about it all year with the Tampa Bay wide receivers. These are guys who are going to have bad games, all of them. Mike Evans last week was the wide receiver 71, only had two receptions for 27 yards, whatever. He's not bad. The offense isn't bad. You keep starting these great wide receivers on a great offense, and you're going to end up with these type of games from time to time. Let me put you in a situation here. Mike Evans has New Orleans on the road in the bye week. Mm -hmm. Would you trade him for this next guy, A.J. Brown, who was 8 for 133 and 1, finally back, target share going up, the team is cruising right now with the return of A.J. Brown and the, and the, uh, you know, the return of hamstring jones yeah heck yeah i would i would absolutely trade so you trade him. evans for aj brown yeah because I, I i think um you know what what i just said about uh, antonio brown's gonna be back and when and gronk will be back and then you've got godwin you've got evans you're gonna have more games with a disappearing act you're gonna have them for both players but i think more with mike evans than you will uh from aj brown and even though aj brown started the year slowly he kind of did that last year and then if you look at the end of the season when they got it going and that seems to be happening right now he was a top like three wide receiver so yeah i would i would definitely rather have aj brown terry mclaurin chris godwin michael pittman big weeks michael pittman was probably the most impressive of the three because he did it in the in a rainstorm and we kind of Beg the team to do what they did on that last throw. Yeah, make him the dude. And throw the ball deep like a normal alpha wide receiver. Right, and then he went up like a normal alpha wide receiver and embarrassed the backup who had just come in, grabbed it out away, and jumped into the end zone and won the game. That was like when we play football in the backyard with my 10-year-old. Mm. Anytime that catch type of catch happens, he just screams, you mossed him. Oh yeah, I mean that's the that's the verb. And then I say, "Have you ever seen Randy Moss before?" He's like, "No." And he said, "No, that's the, just what you say." The the analyst, yeah, I've seen him. <laughs> but Pittman was great, and uh, the path is clear for him to stay consistent. Mike, you know, not here today, but Mike, the fantasy Pittman, um, would approve this message in Tennessee, New York, Jacksonville, like you said, Debo. Debo is unstoppable unless he gets hurt. He's going to be great. I still am waiting for, you know, that 700th injury. But so far, he's been unbelievable. And, and his market share is unhealthy for their team. Like, it's bad. It's bad. It, even Al Michaels was talking about it. He's like – They threw an interception was, because of it. Maybe it was Collinsworth. One of them were talking yeah. about how, like, you have got to get another wide receiver involved. You cannot just throw it to one guy over and over because what's going to happen is exactly what happened on cue – with the Xavier Rhodes pick. Yes. yes. You forced the ball to him. Here, here's what I will say. I might trade Debo high right now. Uh, I love it because eventually you're going to have the switch. I think he might be this week. And, you know, we said the, the, the secret of, uh, of the transition to maybe a not ready Trey Lance was going to be losing ball games. And while and Jimmy Garoppolo is an elite play action passer, and they draw these plays up to fake the handoff and to hit Debo on these deep crossers or deep, you know, these dig routes, and the what happens when the offense changes? The whole system is going to change. And if that happens, Debo, he's still going to be all right, but he's going to be all right in the way that you get. He's not seven for a hundred and one. He's like. Four for 67 and one or something like that where 
the guarantee of less variance is going to be gone. Right now, if everything's status quo, Debo will do this every week. Yeah. Uh, also, I don't I don't know if this plays into it or not, but the trade deadline of November 2nd is uh, swiftly approaching. And I, I do think that, I mean, there's there's no question who the future starter is here. It's Trey Lance. They traded the their entire future for him. That's that is their plan. Oh, like they did for Brandon Ayuk. <laughs> well, they traded actually their entire future versus a little bit of capital. But no, good I know. point. I, I know. Um, but if that's the case, then they want to get something for Garoppolo. They don't want to be paying for a backup. And my point is, they they've maybe got another week or two. But after November second, there is no active benefit of upping the value of Garoppolo. So if you're down, if you're two and five uh, and the trade deadline is passed, you're making the switch to Lance. I think it could happen this week, and I don't know what that will mean for fantasy quite yet. So I don't know if Trey Lance is ready to be a quarterback, but he, you know what? Might not matter for fantasy. Doesn't matter for Jalen Hurts. Yeah, if you can run, you're going to be fine. Kyle Pitts is the wide receiver one for the Atlanta Falcons. I think that that is official. Watching that game, he seemed like the um, primary target. And you brought up last week, Andy, that we, we've talked a lot about, oh, he's a rookie. He's a rookie tight end. Uh, that That is difficult. There are uh, hiccups, but he's a rookie, also works in his favor. He should be better the second half of the year than the first half of the year. He should get better, and every single deep bomb that he's entrusted with that he comes down with is more confidence to Matt Ryan to keep going that way. Um, he Seven for 163 in this game. His body is unfair. Is that fair to say? Is like Yeah. He looks – he's got a wide receiver's body, not a tight end's body, but – he, you have taken a wide receiver and you've made him. You scaled him up. You've just scaled him up. He's not like you watch these giant like Zach Ertz or not Zach yeah. Ertz, Travis Kelsey. Yeah, no He's fan. Just gigantic, humongous guy. You, it's gonna be hard to tackle, but he doesn't move like a wide receiver. This dude is crazy. Let me read stuff that I'm gonna be reading all year long. Okay. First rookie tight end to go over 150 receiving yards since 1995. Uh, the record since 1973 of the most 100-yard receiving games by a rookie tight end is two. Jeremy Shockey. Um, and, and Noah Fant did it in 2019. Uh, he has two in the last two games he's played. He's averaging 15.2 yards per reception. He is also lining up as just an outside wide receiver 31% of the time. It's part of why he looks like a wide receiver is because he is a wide receiver. And like I, He's not a tight end. He's genuinely not. He's not. And, and so he's a cheat code. Is mm -hmm. what I'm saying. He is a receiving Jimmy Graham. cheat code. Jimmy yeah. Graham. Jimmy Graham, when the contract negotiations came, I know Jimmy Grandpa now. I remember is, that, yeah. Jimmy Grandpa is a, a joke now. He just tells tale of his old days. If you're new to fantasy, maybe you don't remember, but Jimmy Graham was a uh, world beater, one of the best fantasy uh, you know, uh, options out there for five years with the Saints, and it was because he was a wide receiver. And then when his contract negotiation came up, they wanted to franchise tag him and pay him at the tight end rate. And he's like, but, I, dude, but I'm, not I'm, a, not. But I'm not a tight end. And so there was a whole problem there. And But that's what Kyle Pitts is. He is not a tight end, and that is delightful. It's also delightful that you're on a team that is you know, mediocre defensively and a quarterback that will throw for 4,000 plus. Yeah. So you put those things together and trust gets built. And, and Kyle Pitts, I mean, other than Travis Kelsey, he, he's the number one. In my opinion, I don't think you want another tight end I, in football. Yeah, I don't know that I would go that far. I would still uh, rather have I, – I know that Waller obviously was injured and has had a bad stretch, but I would take the, the history and the longevity. I think I would also go Mark Andrews. But he's in that conversation with that tier of player for sure. That's fair. Uh, Mike gets sick. He's 7 for 85 and 1. He's the tight end 3 on the year. You stay in those flames at this point, heavily involved. And he is a big play tight end. He has, uh, at least going into the week, was one of the leaders in terms of, you know, the longest receptions at the tight end position. It really, really stinks um, because I I drafted him in our listener league. Yeah. And I got his first two weeks. His first two weeks were a grand total of three receptions for 41 yards. And then I, I cut him because he was not anything. And then since that time, he's on pace for. So the last five games, listen to this pace. 
he's on pace for 115 receptions. That's that's like a phenomenal wide receiver yeah. and unheard of at tight end. I, obviously, he's not going to do that. 1,300 yards. Zach Ertz in his debut with the Cardinals, 3 for 66 and 1. They also looked to him in the end zone later in the game. You saw a little bit of miscommunication or, or acclima oh. acclimation yeah some some you know the the mind sync wasn't there between Kyler and Ertz there were two different plays one of which resulted in an interception and one that just could have been a touchdown that wasn't where Ertz went one way or stopped yep. in a zone and 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 Kyler thought the opposite thing was happening and those will get corrected so Ertz looks in and he came out he said I've never seen so much <laughs> green in the middle of the field because what are you going to do you got to focus on Zach Ertz? No. Hopkins, A.J. Green, the Rondale, Christian Kirk, and then don't let Kyler run. Yeah. Zach, and, there's Zach Ertz in the middle of the field. And you no have to cover him. Chase Edmonds in the receiving game. Yeah. All right. Robert Tunyon had his first nice game of the year, four for 63 and a touchdown. It was good to see. He's a streamer, um, which is the same category as the uh, epic C.J. Uzama game. There's only three catches, but he's a dart throw on any week where you need a tight end. Uh, let's talk the less fortunate. Mm. Smelly. Pooped in his big boy pants. I'm really glad that that segment is back. Yeah, it's, uh... It just amplifies our brand, you know, in a real authentic way. Yeah, it makes us, um, you know, like... So not sophisticated, not More like but, diarrhea. Oh, like, okay. Like, it makes us like that. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, 20 for 35, 206. I love that he had a terrible game just because we never get to talk about bad games with Patrick Mahomes. He's the best quarterback in football. He's going to turnovers. Be, he's going to be fine. Unfortunately, the real the real scare there at the end of the game got a nasty hit, exited early. Thankfully, cleared concussion protocol in the game. They they decided not to put him back out there. In fact, I was saying before that play, before that drive, I was telling Andy, I was like, "Why is get him out of this you game? Did. He yeah. should not be playing in this game. Get get Tyree Kill out, get Travis Kelsey out, get Patrick Mahomes out. You lost the game, move on to the next one. Um, and and that's what they'll do. No one's worried about him um, as far as fantasy-wise. He's going to be great. Sam Darnold, 16 for 25 he's for 111. So, <laughs> he's so bad. I enjoyed the victory lap over the first three games when he had Christian McCaffrey of like he can be a fantasy-relevant quarterback, and he can. And when Christian McCaffrey comes back, if he's still the starter, um, he he's going to have – fantasy relevant games he's a streaming option but as far as a quarterback a real world he is not the dude he sucks are you saying that targeting ian thomas in the middle of four giants defenders i'm he, saying that would have been better than targeting the four giants defenders oh, okay but yes he he's just he's not going to ever be their answer which is why they've now popped up in the deshaun watson talks and he got benched in this game yeah um you know, we talked about Justin Fields already, Jimmy G. Uh, I mean, it's really hard when the ball comes squirting out of your hands in the middle of the rain to destroy a guy. And you uh, can't blame anyone for losing a ball in that game. There were That ball was on the ground 50 oh, times. Oh, you know what? Carson Wentz would have had about an 80-yard touchdown to Naeem Hines if that ball didn't deflect off his hands wide open. Jimmy Garoppolo, when, when they asked Kyle Shanahan whether he will start Week 8 against the Bears, the quote was, I would guess so. Yeah. Uh, reading between the lines, yeah, I don't think Lance's knee's good yet. Do you, Justin Fields, Trey Lance matchup next week? Is that what we might see? Oh, yeah. Some men just want to watch the world burn. All right. Tell me if you're worried about any of these running backs that struggled this week, okay? Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> well, negative points for A.J. Dillon. Three for six, two fumbles. Gross, gross, gross. And he, people were finally willing to put him in their lineup. Yeah, we, we talked about it. We weren't wanting to start him, but we said our eyes would be on him to see how the carries split out. This is really a an irrelevant game for both Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. I am obviously not going to stick with Dillon as a startable option, and I'm not worried about Aaron Jones. Um, okay, so you're not worried about the Aaron Jones game. Thursday night against Arizona, tough defense. Still sticking with him. Yeah. Antonio Gibson only played 42% of snaps, was 14 for 51, had a couple goal line opportunities. This is the Gibson experience. If he scores around the goal line, you're happy. If he doesn't, you're sad. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, I mean, he's going to be much, much better in games where you think they have a chance to be competitive against Green Bay, and this is part of 
you know, the, the game was just out of hand, not very competitive. Next week against Denver, I could see Gibson having a much better game. Disappointment from Daryl Williams in this game because the offense couldn't move the ball at all. So, you know, you move forward. Daryl Henderson, 15 for 45 on the ground, 3 for 19, had a ton of snaps, just didn't end up with a good game. Yeah, it was just uh, – it was really surprising, but the utilization was there in Houston's next week. So this would – the only thing you can do on a bad game like this is try to trade for them. That's it. You you hold them if you it's got them, or you try to trade for them f for a manager that thinks this is the new norm because it's not. Is it time to bench Mike Davis? Four carries, 10 yards. I mean, are, that is not – Are you talking to me or are you talking to Atlanta? Oh, I was actually probably talking to Al Borland who has him in his lineup. No, he doesn't. I did. Oh, sorry. Four for 10. 60% of snaps. Cordero had 73% of snaps. Well, the I next... Mean, to know that this is the the floor is uh, it's not a nice revelation. No, and then the Carolina, for all the Sam Darnold problems, their defense is good. Their rush defense is very good. That's who they play next week. The Saints, after that, their rush defense is very good. Uh, Mike Davis is like, uh, tomorrow's episode, he's going to be one of the names you're talking about. Can you drop him? Because he has had the opportunity. And the last several weeks, he's been the running back 31, 30, 26, 59 with a bye week in there. He's just, he's an irrelevant option. He's not doing anything for you. It's funny because before the season, we knew somebody. Like Mike Davis couldn't do it. Right. Somebody was going to, I didn't know it was going to be Cordero, but Damian Williams, huge disappointment, probably droppable. Um, I wouldn't have any confidence playing them next week, which makes a player droppable. Exactly. Basically, if you can't play them next week, the way the bye weeks work, you can let them go, which is it's a huge disappointment because you missed a week with COVID. You spent all this fab on them, but you you don't get bonus points in the future for sticking with something you did in the past in fantasy. Mm -hmm. Chuba Hubbard is another player that's, you know, this has been disappointing. And the Panthers, Matt Rule comes out, and these quotes are just, Jason, I got I got a call into question. What's happening with Matt Rule? All right, call it into question, and you should be, you shall be answered. I mean, let me. He said uh, he blamed himself for not coaching Sam Darnold well enough. He said they need more from the run game. He wants to establish the run. Chuba was twelve for twenty eight. Are we just saying things out loud with no ability to change them at I, this point for Matt Rule? Yes, there's no ability to change it, but you still have to answer questions at press conferences, and, and the reality is they need more from their run game. <laughs> True. I mean, they, we need more from our run game. Well, yeah, but you're not going to get it until Christian McCaffrey's back. Maybe that's what he's saying. We need more Christian McCaffrey in our yeah. run game. Um, and then you can't say a bad word about Sam Darnold. You have to. You still, your goal here is still win games, and I think he is a fragile, fragile man right now. So... That's oh, that's on me. That's He's bad coaching. That's that's on me. I need to do a better job. Put him in better position, and then and then you shut the door, and you, you throw darts at your Sam Darnold dartboard. <laughs> Drop Naeem Hines. He's sharing too much time with Marlon Mack behind Jonathan Taylor. Uh, he did nothing again. What if Marlon Mack is traded this week before the trade deadline? Uh, then you probably would regret dropping Naeem Hines. Maybe, but maybe not. He just hasn't done it. I'm not even sure you would have regretted dropping him last year because even when he'd give you a good game, he'd take three off. Yeah. Wide receivers of concern. Ready for the drop alert? The drop test? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Allen Robinson, Darnell Mooney. Uh, you got to drop him. It's Tyler been, Boyd. I, I've said, like, you got to trade Allen Robinson. You can't, so move on. Don't, don't let him hurt you anymore. Have a ceremony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe like open a bag of chips or something Invite in, some in friends. honor of. Yeah. Uh, Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd is doing exactly what I think the expectation was if Jamar Chase and T. Higgins are out there. He's going to get 50 yards. Congrats. So, yeah, you don't want that. Brandon Ayuk. I don't need to ask that. Drop him. Uh, Julio Jones. No, you're not dropping Julio Jones. Are you playing him, though? Yeah, I would play Julio Jones. I, I would. I he, he had a very bad game. Two for 38, coming off of his hamstring injury. It's still good to see him out there. Um, didn't look bad, and, and uh, you know, as far as, like, visually, with, I think there was a great play called back. Um, I'm not too worried about that. Henry Ruggs, Brandon Cooks. I mean, those are players that are going to have bad games. You know, we're at the point of wide receivers where it's like, yeah, they're going to have bad games, and they're going to have good games. 
So I would continue rostering them and play them when you think the matchup is good. Henry Ruggs is on bye. So maybe if you – I mean, he's the type of player where it's like, I'd prefer to have Ruggs than – than a lot of other um, you know, bench players. But if I need a a pickup on a bye week, then, yeah, I, I, I would sadly say sayonara. TJ Hawkinson had nine targets, but he was six for 48. Mark Andrews had seven targets, but just three for 48. Any concern with those guys? They're just tight ends that you start every week? Yep, they're tight ends you start every week, um, no matter what, unless you can trade up to get a better one. I mean, they're, they're still very, very – Good players. I'm not worried about any of them. Well, Fant, Fant is Judy more should straight. be back this week. Yeah, I'm more worried about Fant. Uh, maybe they'll get Watson. All right, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting this podcast. Elijah Mitchell signed jersey. See, they're up with the most recent mm -hmm. names. Uh, Fifty bucks ends on Tuesday night. Tua Tungavailoa signed Dolphins mini helmet. Fifty bucks ends Tuesday night. PristineAuction.com. Use code Ballers. To get a $10 credit. The Fancy Hitman will be back tomorrow. Check out our community of incredible human beings at jointhefoot.com. You'll get a bonus episode and a ton of sweet parts. Have a wonderful day. We'll be in waivers tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Foot Clan, this episode was brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Visit omahasteaks.com. Keyword footballers. Save over 50% when you order the deluxe grill out assortment. Plus, get 12 free Omaha Steaks burgers and keep making memories with the ones you love. That's omahasteaks.com. Use the keyword search footballers.